Meet Hercules. Hercules is special. He is a liger, the product of a male lion and a female tiger. But that's not what makes him so special. What makes him totally unique is that at 405 kilograms in weight, he is the biggest cat alive in the world today. Now, there's no denying that Hercules has a bit of a weight problem, but even if we put him on a crash diet and he dropped 50 or 60 kilos, he would still dwarf any living wild lion. For example, this is a Southwest African lion. Isn't he magnificent? Just look at that big hair. It's been claimed that big males of this subspecies can exceed 250 kilograms or around 550 pounds in weight. Historically, it's been claimed that the all-time largest wild lions ever captured or killed exceeded 270 kilograms or around 600 pounds. But in reality, having spent many hours digging through deep databases, I've not been able to find a single totally verifiable example of a wild lion that reached over 225 kilograms. On the other hand, prehistorically, things may have been very different. There were times when the sight of a 250 kilo lion may have been nothing out of the ordinary. In fact, there are three or four species of extinct lion that might have commonly exceeded 250 kilos and at least occasionally may have pushed Hercules into second place. Many viewers of my little channel will already be aware that there once were giant lions in Europe, Asia and North America. But it now seems increasingly likely that there were times when giant lions were pretty much everywhere. Research conducted within the last decade or so suggests that they were once found on every inhabited continent except Australia. If you would like to find out more about giant lions, where they lived and just how giant they really were, then keep watching. Hi, I'm Professor Steve Rowe. I'm a paleontologist who does real paleontologist stuff like reconstructing fossils, naming new species, publishing dozens of scientific articles and supervising PhD students. I've even been known to get my hands dirty in the field. And this means that on this channel, you're watching real paleontology from a real paleontologist. Now, before I go any further, I just want to make it clear that this won't be an extensive deep dive into the biology and ecology of giant lions. I'll get around to that sooner or later, but it will be a very big project. For now, I just want to examine the evidence for the recently proposed range extensions of giant lions. I also want to take a look at what defines a giant lion and how we paleontologists go about predicting their sizes. Just how giant were giant lions? Okay, so what even is a giant lion? More detail on this later, but for now, the short answer is a species or subspecies clearly related to the modern day lion, Panthera leo, but significantly larger. Three fossil species are widely recognised. So, let's take a quick look at our cast of characters. The oldest of these is Panthera fossilis, sometimes called the Mosbach lion, after the location it was first found in, Mosbach, Germany. It's a middle Pleistocene beast, recovered from deposits ranging from around 900,000 to 300,000 years old across Eurasia, from Germany eastward through Poland and Ukraine to Western Siberia. The second giant lion, Panthera spelia, more commonly known as the cave lion, is widely considered to be the direct descendant of the Mosbach lion. This species expanded the lion's range into the northwesternmost part of North America, Beringia, the ice-free landmass that connected Asia and North America at various times through the ice ages. It appears to have 
originated around 700,000 years ago, and it was extinct by around 13,200 years ago. The third species is Panthera atrox, the American lion. This species was quite widely spread in North America from around 129,000 years ago to 4,800 years ago. It's generally thought to be descended from the cave lion. Now, it has recently been argued here by Cimento and Agnelin in 2017 that Panthera atrox's range extended deep into South America, right down to Patagonia here. So what's this about? How the heck do you hide a giant lion for so long? Well, Cimento and Agnelin argue that the evidence has been hiding in plain sight for decades, a case of mistaken identity. They propose that material assigned to a giant extinct jaguar, Panthera onca mesembrina here, is in fact Panthera atrox. Now, if they're right, this is really interesting, massively increasing the American lion's range. Another interesting knock-on is that fragments of skin attributed to it suggest that it was dark red with lighter yellowish stripes on its forelimbs. So, Maybe this is the colour of the American lion, at least in South America. So what do Cimento and Agnelin base their arguments on? Well, we are looking at a bunch of anatomical features, mostly regarding the skull and teeth, which they interpret to be more lion-like than jaguar-like. These include the relative size and shape of nasal bones, as well as the presence or lack of of specific lumps and bumps on the cheek teeth. They also point to apparent behavioural differences. Material previously attributed to the giant jaguar is commonly found in caves along with the accumulated remains of their prey and in relatively open habitats. This would be unusual for living jaguars. And then of course there is the skin. If the reddish fragments attributed to the skeletal material really are from a big cat, then it would seem more likely to represent a lion than a jaguar. And lastly, there is a matter of size. Pimento and Agnelin produced an estimate of 231 kilograms, while others have forward estimates ranging from 190 to 243 kilograms. These are all well above the maximum for living jaguars, which top out at around 160 kilograms, but it's well within the size range predicted for Panthera atrox. Even more recently, a fourth giant lion has been discovered, this one from Africa. It was described by Manthe and friends here in 2018. It's a skull from northwestern Kenya, dated to around 200,000 years in age. As you can see, it's not a terribly pretty fossil, but it is pretty darn complete, and it is definitely very large. On the basis of skull and dental measurements, this African giant was only slightly smaller than the very largest Panthera atrox, and larger than any cave lion specimens, as you can see in this figure here. However, Manthe did not provide an estimate of its weight. And this brings us to the vexed question of just how giant were all these giant lions? The short answer is, it depends. More specifically, it depends on which method or methods you use to calculate your predictions and the data that you have available. Some methods are clearly more reliable than others. There are basically two approaches. The first is regression-based. For this you need to collect measurements from a sample of living species for which you have actual body mass information. So, for example, we can take measurements of skull length, tooth length, or the lengths and circumferences of leg bones from extant species of known body weight and plot them out like this, with the measurement on one axis and the body weight on the other. We can then plot in the measurement from the extinct animal and see what body mass would be predicted. In this plot here, for example, I have bite force and body mass. So 
if we know the bite force of an animal, we can read off the body mass that we would expect from an animal that bites that hard. We can also use a multivariate approach, pretty much the same thing, but we use multiple measurements. So we could use skull length, some tooth lengths, and limb bone measurements all together. The second approach is what we call volumetric reconstruction. Here, we estimate body volume from 3D models. Once you've got an estimate of the animal's volume, it's a very simple process to convert this to a weight estimate. Now, these approaches have their advantages and disadvantages. Done well, I think that the volumetric approach is likely to give you the most reliable estimate. But there are major drawbacks here. For starters, this can be a very time-consuming process, and you need a complete or at least near-complete skeleton in order to do it. And for most species, we just don't have complete skeletons. For these reasons, the great majority of weight estimates out there use regression approaches. So now, what actual weight estimates do we have out there available to us in the scientific literature? Well, for Panthera atrox, we have a lot using regression-based methods, and at least one based on a volumetric approach. Among these, one of the most extreme is a maximum body mass exceeding 500 kilograms, provided by William Anionge here in 1993. But researchers since then appear to have settled on lower maximum sizes. Two of the most widely cited were offered by Wheeler and Jefferson, and a second by Christiansen and Harris. Both were published in 2009. Wheeler and Jefferson gave average body masses of 177 kilos for females and 247 for males. Their maximum was 457. Christiansen and Harris, based on a skull length measurement, provided a maximum figure of 351 kilograms for the largest and 125 for the smallest. The sole attempt at predicting body mass using a volumetric approach was published in 2017 here by Andrew Cuff and friends. These guys did awesome work, meticulously reconstructing all the major muscles, one of the very few American lions known from a near complete skeleton. For this individual, they produced estimates of between 180 and 219 kilograms, although this was certainly not the largest known specimen. So, what are we to make of this? Was there a time when every inhabited continent in the world, except Australia, was home to giant lions? Well, for sure, I would take any weight estimate with a grain of salt. And certainly, before you get into any debate over whose favourite fossil cat is the biggest, you need to know just how your weight predictions were determined. But my own opinion on this is that it is very probable that North American lions grew to be well over 350 kilograms. But I'm far from convinced that any managed to top 400 kilograms. Interestingly, Boris Sorkin, 2008 here, argued that body masses exceeding 420 kilos might be right up against their biomechanical limits and that they literally could not have functioned as a cat at weights beyond this. But the bottom line is that even 350 kilograms is way beyond the size of the largest living lions. So what about the other giant lions I've discussed here? Well, if anything, it seems very likely that the Eurasian Panthera fossilis grew to be larger than the American lion. The largest skull for this species is reportedly 485 millimetres long, compared to a maximum 467 millimetres for Panthera atrox. Things are a little more complicated regarding the Eurasian cave lion, though. This is because there is a pretty well documented decrease in size over time with this species, as recently documented by Master Zach and Goring here in 2024. But there is still little doubt that even as it neared extinction, it was considerably larger than the living lion. 
As for our African giant, I think it's pretty much a slam dunk. Sure, there is only one specimen, but it is way outside the size of living lions. What it's worth, I strongly suspect that it represents a distinct giant subspecies of the African lion, perhaps even a new species altogether. This then just leaves South America. Now, for our South American giant lion, the estimate of around 230 kilograms would certainly make it an extremely large lion today, but maybe not really a giant. Of course, though, this is based on very scant material. To determine whether it was a true giant will require the discovery of more material. And of course, at this point, we can't even be sure that it was even a lion. I will finish up shortly, but before I do, could I please ask you to like and subscribe to my little channel? It'd be much appreciated. In conclusion, then, it seems pretty certain that there once was a time when you could have encountered giant lions on at least four of the world's six habitable continents. And even if the South American material referred to Panthera atrox turns out to be a giant jaguar, one thing is for sure, on five of these continents, you could have encountered a panthrine cat as large or larger than any living lion.